And separately, though, I played a Senate candidate on C-SPAN from West Virginia, an engineer, coming out and laying out how they blew up the World Trade Center towers. Uh, and I've got a Herald Sun poll, 67% believe inside job. Trades Hall President uh, Kevin Bracken stands by his 911 conspiracy. And I love what he said. He was on ABC News. That's Australian Broadcasting uh, Company, not, not, not U.S. Uh, Trades Hall President, uh, he is the... Uh, Victorian Secretary of uh, Maritime Union of Australia, very powerful position uh, in the uh, Labor Party. And uh, he says that most of his members agree with him. Uh, and he talks about polls showing 50% in Australia believe inside job. Well, they're a lot higher than that. I mean, I've got an Angus and Reid of 84%, New York Times, 19, uh, 2006, excuse me. But it says Mr. Bracken sparked outrage yesterday when he told John Fain's ABC talkback program that attacks were not the result of terrorist activity. He said the story was a conspiracy that didn't stand up to scientific scrutiny. And he's an engineer. Uh, the, um, uh, this morning, uh, Mr. Bracken phoned into Fain's program again for a right of reply. He said he wasn't phoning as the president of the Trades Hall Council or the secretary of Melbourne's Union of Australia. Uh, Mr. Bracken stood by his comments and said he had the support of 50% of the community. He also attacked the talk show host that was attacking him, claiming he was ridiculed on yesterday's program. Unfortunately, cowards like yourself, this is a quote, have set the political agenda in this country for too long, said Kevin Bracken. I won't be cowered uh, down to bullies like yourself. Uh, and, and he went on, and we'll scroll down and show you a photo of this uh, hero. And uh, but but there's more and more people, professionals, military people, Sybil Edmonds, uh, you know, working with the FBI and NSA, uh, who who who. And I mean, you heard Anthony Shaver if you were listening last hour, folks. I talked about the government staging events. I talked about uh, I talked about how. Alaki, you know, uh, the supposed uh, head Al Qaeda commander, meeting with the Secretary of the Army two months after 9/11 in, in the Pentagon, and you know what could Schaefer say? He said, "No, it, it is what it is. People just look at it and make your decision." I mean, folks, we've got criminals running the country that blew up those buildings. I mean, do you understand the magnitude of this? And if it's uncomfortable to come out and say it, sorry, that's just the way it is. Facts are facts are facts. And I saw the media hyping we were going to be hit by terrorists. And when we get hit by terrorists, give all your rights up. I saw that in the months leading up to 9-11. And I could see what they were doing to the point of being able to say they're going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on their CIA asset bin Laden. Just like a Lockheed CIA. I mean, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The, the guy who the media and the Pentagon tell us is the number one al-Qaeda operative in the world. They are telling us, it's now confirmed, two months after 9-11, when he's on the news as one of the masterminds, he was number three at the time, now he's number one, Anwar al-Awlaki, headline, Al-Qaeda leader dined at Pentagon just months after 9-11 in a closed-door meeting with the top brass and the secretary of the army. And, and, and then he runs the underwear bombing. He runs the Times Square bombing. He runs Major Hassan attack at Fort Hood. He runs it all. Okay, and then a SWAT is MI6, that's mainstream news, Rashun uh, a SWAT, uh, for the 7 7. I mean, Bob, it's out in the open, okay? None of us are safe, okay? If you cower to this, they win, okay? Ask your gut, not even looking at the evidence. Are you afraid of men with turbans? Or are you afraid of a government that puts in naked body scanners and now going in courthouses everywhere? And, and it lies to you and says they're not saving the images, and it turns out they are. I mean, this is a pack of murdering criminals. Your life means nothing to them, and the naivete that is going on in this country and the world is allowing this evil to grow to proportions never before seen. It's over. The thumb-sucking denial is over. You think I like risking my life? You think I like death threats? You think I like people physically attacking me? You think I like hack attacks? You think I like every major globalist think tank calling me enemy number one? You think this is fun? You think I like it? I wish men with turbans did what they did and not our own government. That's a lot less scary. I wish none of it ever happened. Okay? But 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 living in denial isn't going to change it. I'm sorry I'm ranting, Bob. I'm just sick of the cowardice. And I love this guy saying, I'm not a coward, you're a coward, and it's time for cowards to not set the agenda. Bob Chapman. I hear you, and you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And we're not going to take it anymore.